Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? My name's Tada. Yeah, I hope you guys had a pretty awesome day today. My day's been pretty awesome so far. So, today what we're going to be doing is making this low poly scene that you're looking at right in front of you. So, I sort of titled this one Day and Night. It really is more of a concept than anything else. You can really use this in many, many different ways. It's sort of like a, a floating island with sun, moon, mountains, trees, all of that, but you can really put anything you want on top of this. It's more the concept than anything else, but I'm going to be walking through exactly how I made this, both Cinema 4D and Photoshop techniques, so I'm going to be going over absolutely everything I did to make this, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can learn something cool from this and turn it into something that you can call your own creation and show off to the people that you like and uh, post on social media, all that good stuff. So let's dive right into it with Cinema 4D. It is actually a fairly easy one, fairly quick really shouldn't take too too long so there isn't too much to it but um the first thing that we're gonna do is just go in here and drop in a sphere and uh, that's kind of small so I'm just gonna bring it up to probably a size of like 250 and for the first time in any of my low poly tutorials I'm actually gonna tell you to increase the segments um let's go at about a hundred segments which is quite a bit for low poly but you'll see why we do this in a bit and then change the the type here to octahedron which i believe is the correct pronunciation i'm getting better at the pronunciations of those they are just they're just so hard to say anyways um so now that we have that done what i want to do is delete the fong tag which is the little tag right here with the two dots click that backspace and uh, this is where we sort of get to the, the shaping of the actual floating island here. So the first thing I want to do is go into this little bend tool, grab a polygon reduction, slap that onto the sphere, and right away you see it just sort of makes the polygons a little bit less. And uh, since we already have so many polygons on there, it really isn't that much low polyed, but uh, it, it gets the job done. It's definitely enough. Um, we're also going to go into the same tool again and get a displacer. And make sure we put that above the polygon reduction. That's to be at the bottom of everything. That's very important. And nothing really needs to be in any position except for the polygon reduction. That has to be on the bottom. So we're going to go into the displacer. Go to the shader. Change the shader to noise. Go back to object and just increase the height a bit. Just so we get something a little bit more crazy and unnatural low poly looking. And one more thing that we have to do is go to MoGraph, Effector, and Random. And drop that in right above the displacer. And uh, in the random, what we're gonna do is go to parameter, or sorry, deformer, and change it to polygon, and then just sort of mess around in the parameter settings with the X, Y, and Z sizes till we get something that we like. And uh, obviously, you can go through, mess around with all the settings, make sure you find something you like. That's what it looks like without polygon reduction, so it is very important to have that on relatively high. I'm gonna keep mine at about 92% looks pretty good and uh, the next thing I want to do is go to my sphere press C on it so it becomes editable and as you can see it sort of turns back to our normal sphere but if you click off of it it goes back to the low poly it's just so when we're editing the points it looks like this just was easier to get a better understanding and it's also going to help us a lot in what we're about to do so with the sphere selected I'm gonna click on this little cursor icon and then make sure surface selection is enabled on the left side here and um, I want to right click go to brush and now what we can do is sort of play around and uh, model this a little bit so obviously that's not what we want <laughs> I'm gonna go and make sure that our fall off option is on constant and our mode on surface and uh, mess around with the strength a bit I'm gonna put it on negative 25 and the radius you can mess around with right here which is just the size of the brush itself or you can use the square bracket keys which is pretty easy as well and that's what I prefer to do and uh, what I want to do is pretty much just get the, the basic shape here to sort of go in like that, as you can see in the image. So to do that, I'm just going to drag out since it's negative, and it's going to go in. And uh, the first time I did this, it was so weird to me because I'm trying to learn ZBrush, which is sort of like a character modeling tool. And I'm so used to everything being symmetrical, but yeah, you do have to do both sides. It's not going to happen on its own here unless you have the symmetry tool on, but... I really don't like the symmetry tool that much in Cinema 4D. I feel like it can be a little bit more easier if you ask me. But I'm um, pretty much trying to get this into a, a point. And then if I click off, you can see that's what it's turned into. But um, I don't want that yet. I just sort of want to get this a little bit more into shape. And uh, mess around with it a little bit more. So just go around, do your thing, and obviously, like I said, you can do whatever you want. This is your creation, so make it however you think looks good. I'm thinking, let me just click off. 
that's pretty good for right now. Plus, we can also go back and mess around with this sort of stuff, right? So it is very cool because you can always go back and adjust things and change it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is sort of flatten off the top here. As you can see, it is very flat there. And uh, the way that I'm going to do that is very, very easily I'm just going to go drop in a cube, increase the cube size quite a bit, actually. Maybe not that big, just big enough, big enough so that it can cut off the top. And um, what I'm going to do is go over to this tool here, the, the array tool, go over to bool, drop both of these in bool, making sure that the sphere is on top of the cube in the bool. And what that does is it makes it so that the cube cuts off everything that's overlapping the sphere because it's underneath. And then you can pretty much bring it up and down. And as you can see, it deletes what is overlapping. So whatever I have the cube over top of, gets deleted and it's a flat surface. So I just need to find a spot that I like, maybe right around there. Looks good. Let's see. Yeah, that, I like that right there. That's pretty good if you ask me. I like that. And uh, pretty much that is our base island. So we can rename that to base island and uh, get some color on there. <laughs> So just new material, take off specular, and with low poly texturing, it's super easy. You just take off specular, go into a color, make a color that you like, and uh, plop it on. For this, I'm going to do sort of like a faded beige, and uh, slap that on there. Yeah, it's a similar color. So that's pretty good. Maybe even a little bit darker than that. It's really is personal preference. This is coloring, so there's really not much I can teach you with coloring. Yeah, I like that a bit better, though. Um... If I remember correctly, the next thing I did do was add in these mountains here, which is super easy once again. Just put some low poly stuff on a mountain or a train um, object. So we go back into the cube, go to landscape, bring it up, and I just mess with the sizes a little bit. So drop down the size to probably 125 and 125 for the length and width. And then for the height, um, just mess around with that a little bit. Of course, we don't want it looking like that because we need to delete this thing here, the fong tag, to make it more low poly. And then, of course, the width segments and height segments are way too high. So bring those down to about, uh, what is it an appropriate amount? 14, maybe? Let's go with that for now. Yep. And um, pretty much just get that in position wherever you want it to be. Put it into the world a bit. If it is sticking out, you can just delete that. But um. One of the things I do want to do actually is make the segments 25 instead so I can put a low poly effect on it with the polygon reduction. And what that does is it sort of, it sort of adds like a triangular shaping to it. So I'm just going to put on low poly or polygon reduction. And as you can see, it sort of makes it like a triangular shape. It's weird. It's hard to explain. Um, but as you can see, the polygons are made up of triangles rather than just straight lines. And I like that a lot more. I think it looks better. Plus that's way for this and it makes it a more similar style. So we're going to have that on there. Uh, maybe we mess with the seed a bit just so we get some different looking uh, mountains here. I like that one. Bring up the size a little bit. And like I said, you can just mess around and like delete the excess, but I don't think we're going to have any excess with this one. So if you look in here, I actually have the mountains as a different shade, just very slightly different shade than the, the base island itself. So I'm just going to hold and control, drag over the material open it up and just make it a little bit lighter just enough so that you can notice it and slap it right onto there just so it's a little bit different and you guys can actually tell if the mountain is a, a different texture so i'm going to duplicate it by clicking the landscape holding control and this is windows by the way so it will be command on a mac holding control dragging it up and now i have a second one which i'm just going to move a little bit behind like so and uh, mess with the seed a little bit, get a different looking thing. Whatever looks good, that even might do it. Mm. That's good, right there, I like that one. So now we have our two mountains there. I'm just gonna sort of adjust the placement of them. I like that right there. And what I'm gonna do now is actually, with both of them selected, so I clicked one, hold shift, and click the other one, I'm going to hold control, I almost said command, drag up and duplicate them. And with these, what I'm going to do 
is uh, just rotate them slightly. Move them back a little bit. And then I'm going to change the color of these ones to even a little bit lighter. Just so we have different textures, different colors. Even if it is super subtle, it is something different. So just put the texture on those ones. Delete the old texture. And uh, maybe even adjust this a little bit more. And if you really want to, you can even go into it and change the shape of the mountain itself, which I think I did in the original. It just makes it look better and more, you know, unique and different. So I think I'm going to do that as well. So just opening up the landscape, changing the seed, and it pretty much does work for you with the seed. It's just a randomly generated um, landscape. So really not much control you can do over that. And there it is. I like that. That looks pretty cool. And uh, obviously we need the big mountain as well, which is exactly the same as we made the other mountains. So I'm just going to duplicate another one of these, move it into place, probably make it taller as well because it is a bigger mountain. <laughs> Change the seat up a bit. And as you can see, it's like a super, super simple technique that there's really not a lot that I can just show you with unless like you don't know a lot about this. A lot of this is like, um, you understand the basic tools and then it's the creative process as well. And that's why I always encourage you guys when you watch my tutorials to learn what I'm doing and then add your own special twist to it as well because I like seeing what you guys can make. I love seeing you guys like sending me stuff on Facebook and saying like, hey, I watched your tutorial and I made this. And uh, I think I'm gonna go with this one actually. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. All right. Move that down a bit, that way a bit. Don't want it sticking out. All right, I like that. So pretty much we have the base shape of what we had there. Maybe even open this up and increase the low poly amount. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. And um, what I'm gonna do just to keep this a little bit more organized, this is definitely not a necessity of this tutorial, but I'm gonna click the first landscape, hold shift, click the bottom one, and press Alt G to put them in a null so now they're all together and just rename that mountains just so it's easier to sort of keep track of everything as you can see now we just have two objects here which is like super easy to keep track of and it's like such a simple technique simple tutorial but um looks pretty cool at the end so the next thing I want to do is just add in these trees here which is once again a super super easy thing to do this whole tutorial is really easy and it's great for, especially for beginners or experienced people just to make a, a nice like simplistic design um, I was actually thinking of doing like a snowy version of this soon so I might do that if you see a speed out of that uh, <laughs> you know why I'm doing that so what I want to do for the trees and this is like the easiest way to make trees you can do it in different ways like I know I've taught different ways to do it here on my channel but I'm going to take this cone, adjust the size of it so it's like really, really small. I'm actually going to the cone properties and change the bottom radius so it's a little bit more skinny. And uh, essentially what I want to do here is make a new texture. Make a nice little green for the tree. Something that stands out. This is also cool about the tree. So it just sort of adds color to the whole thing, which nothing else does. So add some green to that. And this is what makes it so easy. So I just duplicate it by holding control and dragging up and then go to my move tool, bring this down the slightest bit and just drop the size. And I pretty much just put a cone under a cone and there's the bottom of the tree. All I have to do is make a new texture for that. Just a darker brown so it really stands out from the other um, aspects of the landscape because everything's pretty brown. So I wanted a more heavy, darker brown. <clears throat> Sorry, more heavy, darker brown more saturated brown just so it sticks out a little bit and uh, there you go that's how easy it is to make a tree <laughs> um, bottom radius maybe Ooh, that is way too small um, something like that there you go so there's our tree <laughs> easy um, I'm just gonna open up our other little views here and if you don't know how to do that it's just this fourth icon here on the side just so I know exactly where my trees are going and uh, get them all in position. This part, I really don't know how much I can teach you because it's like such a, you just gotta do it sort of thing. But um, 
I'm just gonna put my trees in place, duplicate them, and I just sort of put that tree in a null so I know that's together with the actual top part and the bottom part. So I'm gonna duplicate that, move it over a bit, duplicate that, move it over a bit. Like I said, I can't teach you too much about this. It's just sort of like you gotta do it. It's duplicating and moving. Certainly not the most advanced thing here in uh, Cinema 4D, but um, we're gonna keep doing that. So like I said, this is the color part. So obviously it's nice to have a little bit more than anything else. So trees all over the place, maybe one or two more. And I think that'll do. Uh, wrong view. <laughs> There we go. So those are our trees right there. I'm just going to put them all together by selecting all the nulls, Alt G, and renaming it to trees. If you don't know how to rename, by the way, it's double clicking and then just typing it in and pressing enter. So there are our trees already looking pretty similar to this scene here. The next major thing that we have to do is add in the sun and the moon, which is super, super easy to do as well, like everything else in this tutorial. And uh, the way that we're going to do that is by adding in a sphere. And where is it? There it is. <laughs> adding the sphere, shrinking it down to the appropriate size. Put it in wherever we think it needs to be, which in this case, actually, I haven't even set up a camera yet. That's what I should probably do. I'm going to find a good angle, first of all, which is going to be right here, by the way, and drop in a camera just by clicking the camera tool. And um, now I'm gonna <laughs> now I'm gonna put in my sun. So I'm gonna put it in right around there because it's just sort of like rising over the the uh, horizon in view now. So I'm gonna delete the font tag on that, change it from standard to octahedron segments decrease actually, and uh, make it editable by pressing C. I know this is a lot of things, but like when you do spheres in low poly, like you'll get it. You'll just know what to do, and. Um, the only real thing I want to do is just add polygon reduction to the sphere. And uh, that should be good enough. Now I'm just going to add the texture for the sun, which is once again, dig off specular color and whatever sunny color you want to put on. I think that should be good. I think, hopefully. <laughs> so there's my sun. And if you really want to, what you can do actually is... Um, sort of put on like a deformer, which is what I did with most of my other things, but you don't really need to. It's never something that I've felt I needed to do with like a sun or a moon in low poly because it's just, it's like such a massive thing. It's not supposed to be very pointy. So I think that's good. And um, I'm just gonna name that sun. Duplicate it by once again, holding control, dragging up. And I'm gonna move it over here to make the moon. And to do that, I'm just gonna put on like a gray texture, which should be fairly easy to make. More of a dark gray since we have some lighter grays. And um, rename that moon. Maybe even shrink it down a little bit since the moon is smaller. <laughs> Gotta stay accurate, you know. Maybe not that dark gray, actually. That is pretty heavy. If the moon was like that, I'd be a little scared. Um, so there we go. That's the basis of everything. The only real thing left that we have to texture is the clouds. So we'll do that real fast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of cheat. And uh, pretty much... <laughs> well, what is going on here? Uh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I think I'm in my camera mode. Maybe I should like delete this camera right now and come back to it later. Okay, that's definitely it. Uh, why am I still in my camera mode? Okay, I think I fixed it. That was weird. Um, we'll put a camera in later because that obviously didn't work. <laughs> the only thing we have to do left is the clouds, like I said, so I'm just gonna take the moon Duplicate it, bring it up, uh, delete the texture on it, obviously, and put on this sort of lighter gray that we made earlier. Shrink it down a little bit more. And for this, I am actually gonna put on a displacer 
So what I'm going to do is just uh, go to this little bend, slap on a nice displacer, change the shading to noise like we did with the other objects, and just sort of increase, decrease. So it's a little bit more unnatural. And drag up, make a second one, move it over, down, drag up, move it over, down, sideways, whatever direction, and uh, then just resize it. Whatever floats your boat, it's clouds. You do whatever you want. <laughs> and um, as far as clouds go, I think that's good. I'm just going to put those together in a null by pressing Alt G once again, rename it cloud. And now we get to position our clouds. So uh, I think I'll have one. Man, I made that so wrong. <laughs> Let me resize this. There we go. It was just sort of like dragged out way too far. I totally noticed that too, and I just didn't do anything about it. So um, I'm going to imagine our camera is going to be like right here when we finish this. So I'm just going to work ahead of time. This is totally not the right method that you should be doing, but I'm going to do it anyways, even though it's a tutorial. So I'm going to have one cloud there, duplicate it. Put another one like all the way back here but then at the same time like rotate it a bit so it's a little bit different like if you want to you can actually go into the deformer and change it but um it's not really necessary and then maybe make another cloud all the way back here really far away which i think is the same sort of setup i have here yeah one two three four i made a fourth one Let's make a fourth one, just so we're like super, super, super accurate to the main um, creation here. Because I have people sometimes that just tell me like my tutorials aren't close enough to the actual speed arts that I did, and I totally follow that. But at the same time, I always say that I want you guys to make your own stuff. Like, there's no point in taking a tutorial video literally if you can't learn something and apply it into your own method. So I never really try and get you guys to copy me 100%, but that's pretty much everything that we have to do as far as the modeling goes. So good job if you got me, or <laughs> good job if you made it this far. So now I'm gonna slap in my camera and we're gonna do some lighting. So I'm gonna go right here to this sort of like, um, I guess it sort of looks like a plane. It says floor, but uh, we're gonna drop in a physical sky which changes a lot of things. Well, the main thing that we have to focus on is the sun is up here and the moon is down here. So the sun is obviously coming from left to right and we have to recreate that with time and location. So we're gonna sort of make it like a sunset-y sort of view and then we're gonna rotate it so that the sun is coming from the left to the right, sort of like that. And obviously you can mess around. I'm probably gonna change this a little bit. And the other thing I wanna do is drop in just a plain light and um, have it coming in from where the sun is. Just so it sort of recreates that extra sunny feel. It makes like the left side like super bright and the right side like more dark and ignored. And then what I wanna do is go to my render settings, go to output, I wanna make this 1500 by 1500. Um, what else we need to do here? Save, you know, choose a spot for it to save to. Tutorial. Um, I'm going to make mine a PNG. I would highly recommend doing that as well. Alpha channel has to be on if you want to follow this tutorial and <clears throat> make it look as good as it can. And uh, that should be it. I also want to go to effect, add in ambient inclusion, and global illumination. Those are very important. The effect tab is just right here, um, just like underneath the middle part on the left. So we're going to render it out and see what we have so far in this tutorial. All right, so there it is, and that is not far off of the image that I uh, showed at the start here. Let me just open that up again for you, and um, if I can find it. Oh, there it is. That is really not that far off, and I'm pretty happy with that. So what we can do then is open this up into Photoshop, change it up a bit, add some cool effects, and I'll show you what I did to make it end up looking like this. So we're just going to render it out by clicking this middle button, and I'll catch you guys when it's done rendering.
All right, so we just finished rendering and uh, it's here on the desktop. I'm just going to drag it into Photoshop so it makes a perfect 15 by 1500 file. It's 1500 by 1500, not 15 by 1500. That would be a complete disaster. <laughs> so I have my grid here. If you don't have that, you can press Control R or Command R to get your ruler. And I'm just going to find the exact center because it sort of snaps into place for you. It's really nice. And um, I'm going to make a new layer. Put this on the bottom and what I'm going to do with this layer is just make the entire background black just so it's easier to see everything for now and uh, pressing control T on the model that we made we can resize this reposition it I just want to get it into the center and uh, that looks pretty good to me so the first thing that I want to do after this is uh, make a new layer make sure it's above the the uh, model that we made and holding control or command if you're on a Mac click on the little picture here on the right side of the model that we made it makes a perfect selection around the model that we just made but on the new layer what you want to do is um, add some of the lighting effects so what I did here was I have this selected I'm on a new layer and with the brush tool I'm using just a blank white make sure my hardness is on zero with my brush and just sort of go over the mountains with like a nice sort of like a white tint on where it's supposed to be brighter and this is only affecting the the model picture itself and then on the side we're supposed to be dark with a black so it's like a darker side and a lighter side and if I put this on like overlay or something as you can see it's already like a little bit more lighter on one side darker on one side now what I am going to do though is actually just sort of erase what happened to the sun because the sun is like super white right now. Not a big fan of that. And um, there we go. I'm just going to do a little bit to the sun though. Maybe just make it a little bit brighter. Anyways, what I did um, in the picture to sort of make the background follow the image is what I did... Um, was I took my background layer, which I guess I shouldn't even have made black. I made it the color that I wanted it to sort of be, which was orange at the time. And I guess we'll do that again. So we'll make a nice orange background. Maybe that color is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm going to make a new layer on top of the uh, orange layer. And with this, what we're going to do is make this entire layer black. And it'll make sense in a second. You'll understand. So we have a black layer over top of our orange layer. And then we're going to change our brush color to white. And what we're going to do is sort of make like a nice big beam of light coming out of the sun like that. So this is over top of our orange layer. So if we change the opacity, it sort of makes like a brightness coming out of the sun like so. And we can just sort of like mess with that. So it sort of looks like the sun is lighting up the whole thing. The lighting is looking good on the model. It's getting darker around everything else. And uh, so that's the basics of that. And obviously mess with the opacity, how harsh do you want it to be sort of thing. Um, you can even like go to your model and once again go back to the adjustment layer above it and make it darker and lighter. Maybe even add like a yellowish tint to it, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> once again, this is your creation, you do whatever you want with it. So I'm just here to sort of guide you along. Um, what are some other cool things we can do? I guess we can go into the curves and the hue and saturation, sort with hue and saturation, and just sort of mess around with the colors to pick something a little bit different that you like. Maybe like turn it down a bit like that so it's a little bit more red. Saturation, you can turn up so it's like crazy. Turn down so it's super like unsaturated Coolio Instagram style. I've always sort of liked that a little bit more. And then of course go to your curves and mess around with whatever you want. I personally like to go to blue and bring the edges up and down a little bit so it adds a nice little Instagram tint like that. I love that look right there. And the last real thing that I honestly did to this was I just added like a little text there. And I guess I can walk you through that before we end this tutorial, just in case you guys don't know how to do that. Um, pretty much just made a rectangle. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know how to do this. I just I want to make sure I cover everything in my videos from now on. Rasterize that layer. Go to my text tool. What font did I use in that? Um, I believe it was. It starts with an M. 
ends in tilting. There we go. Um, Mixolydian tilting is the name of the font. And I never like to make anything completely black, so a dark gray. Go over there. Day and night. And I want day and to be like a thinner version, so we're going to make it extra light, and then night is bolded out because night is scary. So it has to be big and bold. <laughs> so uh, reposition that. Maybe the rectangle's opacity goes down a little bit, and then we add a drop shadow to it. Because drop shadows are badass and need to be in everything. And, uh... Yeah. That's the image. There's really nothing else I can really go over. That's the exact image right there. Really didn't take too long to make. Hopefully you guys did learn something. Put your own watermark on it. Uh, show it off to whoever you want to show it off to. But I really do hope you guys learned something cool. And I'd love to see your creations. Maybe add like a twist, like I said, like a winter theme or a volcano or something cool. There's so many cool ideas you can do with floating islands. So I'd love to see what you guys made with it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you could drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here, guys, that would be amazing. But once again, my name's been Tie-Dye. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.